Alrighty, let's take a look at question two. On question number two, we're being assessed on how to find the equation of the tangent line, the EOT. Okay, all right, so to get us started, let's go ahead and write down the formula that's going to guide our problem solving process. So the formula for the equation of the tangent line, the EOT, is uh, the formula that's interesting. It's something that we've seen before. It's um, algebra with a hint of calculus, okay? So the formula for the equation of the tangent line is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Take a look at that. This is the equation of a line. It's called the point slope form of the equation of line of a line from algebra, okay? So where's the calculus here? Well, the calculus is in the m component. You have only one point and you cannot use algebra to find the slope at a point. You need to use calculus, okay? So m is basically the derivative at x1, f prime of x1. So you have algebra with a hint of calculus. This is the equation of the tangent line uh, formula. All right, don't forget we have the epic collection of um, formulas for AP Calculus at our website, mattgoodserve.com. Go ahead and check it out. Make sure you have all those formulas mastered in order for you to do well on the AP exam. Okay, so uh, we have our formula down. Let's go ahead and list what we need. Oh, just a side point. Another format that this formula comes in, in, in many calculus textbooks, is as follows. Yeah, this is the function notation, okay? So uh, it's y minus f of y minus f of m a is equal to f prime of a times x minus a, okay? So this is another variation. These two mean exactly the same thing. This is preferable because it's something familiar, but this notation is sometimes difficult to remember, um, but if you just use the standard uh, y minus y1 equals mx times x minus x1, you should be able to do it without any problems. All right, so this is just FYI. So let's go ahead and write down what we know and what we need to find um, in this particular problem. All righty, so um, we are asked to find the equation of the tangent line of y equals sine x at x equals pi. We know what x1 is. x1 is a given x value, which is pi. What is y1? We don't know what y1 is. Well, y1 is basically the function evaluated at the x1 value, okay? Just as this one illustrates, f of a, and a is pi in this particular instance. Uh, okay, so uh, y1 is gonna be the function evaluated at pi. The function is sine x, so we're going to be looking for what sine of pi is. What is sine of pi? Let's go ahead and we can use your unit circle or um, you can make use of your trig function to figure out what the answer is. So I'm gonna use, show you both of them, okay? So we wanna look for sine of pi. In order for that to happen, I'm gonna to have to draw half a circle here. So let's say this is our nice little unit circle Okay, and we have to look at pi. Pi is equivalent to 180 degrees, okay? All right, so this is zero, this is pi over two, and this is pi right here. So we need the coordinates. This is a unit circle, so the radius is one. This is one, zero. Over here is zero, one, and over here we have um, negative one, zero. Okay, so remember y sin and x is, the cos uh, x is the cosine, okay? So in this coordinate point right here, the y coordinate is the sine and because the cosine is the x coordinate. So this value right here, the y value is what sine of pi is. So from the unit circle, we can clearly see that sine of pi is equal to zero, okay? If you wanna use the graph of the sine function, it's not a problem at all. So you just have to remember how your sine function looks like. Your sine function is your nice little S's. All we need is half a period, but let's just draw a complete period, okay? So let's say we have our sine function right here. Make it a little bit bigger. 
So when you're the angles you're evaluating, if they fall on the axis, I find that the graph is faster. Okay, but it's when it's within the quadrants like pi over three, pi over four, or pi over six, it's easier to use a unit circle to figure that out. Okay, uh, so there goes your sine function, like an S. Okay. So what is sine of pi? Where is pi? Pi is halfway here. This is pi. This is full cycle. This is 2 pi. So the y coordinate for this point is 0. So you can clearly see that that's why it's 0. Okay, so we have y1, x1. What's missing? We need m. So m is uh, the slope of the tangent line. m is our SOT, which is f prime of x1. Or the derivative, well, let's, let's use the y notation here so we're consistent. So um, m is uh, y prime at x1, slope of the tangent line, or the derivative at pi. Okay, so anytime you're looking for the SOT, um, slope of the tangent line, you always want to remember that it's a two in one process. Okay, students sometimes combine them into one step and they mess up the problem so you have to remember that it's a two-in-one process the first thing you do is you find the derivative you do the calculus first okay and then when you're done with that you evaluate your derivative at your specified input value this is an algebraic process so you calculus before algebra okay let's go ahead and do it so y what is y y is sine x so let's do the first part okay so part one we want to find uh i keep saying f it's the same thing y is f of x we want to find y prime what is the derivative of sine if y is sine x y prime is going to be cosine x okay super we're done with part one, which is to find the derivative. Now let's go ahead and um, do part two, which is to evaluate the derivative at the specified um, x value, which is pi, okay? So y prime is cosine x. So y prime evaluated at pi is cosine pi. All right, so what is cosine pi? Well, we already have our unit circle here. Remember the y coordinate is the sine, y sin, and the x coordinate is cosine, okay? So for cosine pi, all we just need to look for is the x coordinate of this point here that corresponds to pi on the unit circle, and we see that it's um, a negative one, all righty? Or you can use your the graph. So let's say, let's draw, so this is our sine, right? You want to draw a cosine it's going to look something like this something like that okay so there goes a the cosine right there and you can see that cosine of pi is equivalent to negative one Okay, all right, so y of pi, whichever way you did it, either use it, I mean, y of, y prime of pi, either use a unit circle or the graph is going to give us negative one. Okay, all right, so what did we just find? We just found what m is, so we have everything we need. Let's rewrite, right, rewrite them all. x1 is pi, uh, y1, y1 is zero, and m is negative one. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to put everything together in the formula that we have up here. Y minus Y1 equals MX minus X1. And then we're going to proceed to put it in slope intercept form. Okay, so let's do it. So we're going to have Y minus Y1. Y1 is 0. Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1, which is pi. So let's put this in slope intercept form. We have y equals, distribute the negative one, negative x plus pi is your final answer. The answer to question number two is option letter A. 
Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in preparation for your exams or calculus in general, do give us a like. Your positive feedback is very, very helpful to us. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other presentations such as this. As indicated earlier, if you have any questions or comments, just post it in the comment section below. If you'd like to gain access to our EPIC formula sheet and other valuable resources to help you do well on the AP exam, do visit our website at mathgotserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.